We left Bear Mountain Campground and West Virginia Mountains happy and excited that everything was running pretty smoothly now. We were heading to Pennsylvania and then to New Jersey, the final up north leg in our trip. We liked West Virginia a lot, beautiful mountain state. We enjoyed the weather, the New River Gorge National Park, the campground, and finally our super sea. Well, guess what happened? Oh no! The orange engine warning sign came up again. We panicked and rushed to the closest Freightliner Center in Beckley, West Virginia. Every time the service engine light comes on, and, and it, we've driven 2,000 miles without issue, or uh, not 2,000, but 1,500, and now the service engine light comes on, and if it's, and if it's, I know that if it's a death-related issue, it's going to shut me down so I can only go five miles an hour. We are probably, what's the name of the town we're in now? Summersville. We're in Summersville, West Virginia. I think I can probably get it to your location if you can take a look at it. Any any chance if I if I get it in there, I go stay at a hotel. You can at least diagnose it. Well, the, all I could do is hook a scan to it and read that. That's probably going to give me that medicine, but I, that's really a hard deal to do. We may be able to understand where to start and how severe the faults are. You know, other than that, it, it, you know, it, it can help, but it's probably not going to give it And you never know, sometimes it does. That, that's not all I can do. Well, I, I can't imagine that this thing is severely broken again. I can't imagine. It, it's got a new knocks in, new knocks out. The other part in there, it's got that's new. You know, it's got everything new. So, yeah. you know, starter's new and everything's I mean, new. So, if you can at least diagnose this, I know if I want to stay in West Virginia or if I want to just go somewhere else. As usual, people at Freightliner Service were very nice and ready to help, and agreed to have a quick look at our troubled RV and run the code as an exception to their two-week waiting list they currently had. Going up and down hills and the lights that it it uh, tried to go through a regen. This button right here, uh, regen. Uh -huh. It does it when it thinks it needs it. When the when the uh, uh, DEF, the diesel exhaust system, tells it that it's you know the sensors are dirty or whatever, it does a regen and it burns off all the crap. Uh -huh. So when it failed, that's when the light came on. But then what they're telling me is based on the code, as we continue to drive, it, um, it did another regen. Uh -huh. And so now it says that it's all fine. Uh -huh. And they said that the light will stay on for four cycles, four using cycles. Uh -huh. So you go, you know, and it, they don't even really know what, they can, what the computer thinks is a cycle. But they said, you know, you should be, uh, you should be okay. Mm -hmm. And eventually the light will go out by itself. Mm -hmm. He said when the check engine light comes on, that's when you have a problem. So they're going to have a guy come out and uh, um, try and vent and try and get the light to turn off. Mm -hmm. I feel more comfortable if they can just reset it here and then, okay. you know, the tech guy can probably do it. Is the light still on? You still have a bill light on. Yes, the now, light is still on. Well, say it fails the region, yeah. and then um, it's like one more time. The middle light's going to stay on for four drive cycles. Four drive cycles? Four drive cycles. Um, drive cycle is not necessarily you start it up and you move it and then shut it back off. It needs to see a certain road speed, a certain big cycle on the engine to consider a drive cycle. Later, uh, Jeff was expressing his frustration to his uh, RV buddy. John. So the service engine light comes on, you know that scares the shit out of me because that's, you know, where I gotta pull over and then replace all the parts and I gotta fly home and fly back and get it. So, you know, that light comes on, I'm freaking petrified. 
Yeah, PTSD. I have RV PTSD. I think you should become a doctor and treat that. So we continued our trip with an orange engine warning sign on, assured that it was going to disappear on its own, hoping that it would. Because we spent half of our travel day at Freightliner service again, uh, we had to add an overnight stop to our trip. We decided on a cracker barrel. For our 60 feet length caravan, we had to take two spots and park diagonally. Do you like Crack cracker barrels? Cracker barrels pull through again. They pull through again. I love cracker barrels. They're friendly, kind, considerate. And dogs are with us. Surprisingly, it was a beautiful spot up on the hill with a great view. The morning was an easy takeoff with everything already hooked up and in place. The road from West Virginia to Pennsylvania was very beautiful, peaceful and easy. The arrival to the Heritage Golf Campground was not that smooth. We could not take the car out of the dolly. One of the strap handles was stuck under the car. But we were immediately helped. It always amazes me how friendly and always ready to help the camping community is. This was not the first time when we were helped without even asking. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You're our savior. Yeah. You'll be in our next video. Yeah, right. you're going to if be you famous to now. Yeah. <laughs> the best mechanic in uh, Pennsylvania. <laughs> The Heritage Cove campground was a no thrill campground for us, but very pleasant, nicely wooded, and with spacious sites. We booked a premium site, which we thought, according to the map, was going to face a river. And it was, but the green color on the map did represent the greenery. We arrived on Sunday. The campground was filled with people and fires and kids riding bicycles. To our surprise, when we woke up and went for a dog walk the next morning, the campground was empty. It's a ghost town. The secret was that the majority of the sites in Heritage Cove are seasonal. Jeff, where are the people? It looks like a dead, dead, dead town. Monday, honey. People have jobs. They're working. It's just like alone in the whole park. Yeah. <laughs> the campground is great for boaters with access to lake, boat ramp, and kayak rentals.
but our preferences are hiking and bike riding. Hiking was fun, with a couple of sports with a view, but nothing to compare with the new River Gorge Preserve. I'm still on the impression of it. Is it scary out there? No, a little bit. A little bit? Yeah. No, it's not scared of heights. <laughs> yes. Silly, silly one. <laughs> Not two. Or see. Where are you going? Hmm? Ball. Come back over the same course. Lots of admirers. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Just right now. Wait a minute. Let me check the map. We were combining several trails using my favorite old trail map, but somehow got lost a couple of times. Come on, Oscar. Let's ask our people. Yeah. They are lost again. But the highlight of our hike was an unexpected encounter with a very nice couple, Paul and Natalia. It was amazing how much in common we had. Deer Valley. Oh, I know. Have you skied Deer Valley? Yeah, I skied Deer Valley. We skied all the places around Park City. Um, and then we also like Aspen a lot. Um, you ski snowmass? We both like traveling, hiking, skiing, and more. We could not stop talking and had to continue later. You picked up two strangers yeah. on your hike. Yeah. They followed yes, us. It they was followed like, us. You know, and you were kind enough uh, to invite us to your place, uh, which is a mansion like, <laughs> in the forest. <laughs> yeah. yeah the two <laughs> nicest people with the two nicest dogs. Yeah, and it's, yeah, it's amazing so how, how many so in nice common we have, right? Yes. In the park. Yes. <laughs> We were naturals. We were meant to meet that boy. Where your dog disappeared. We have more. So, what can you tell about this uh, campground? Uh, I don't know. Very mixed. Uh, Wi-Fi is really poor. Uh, getting in and out, it seems to be a challenge. Um, you know, you got a one-mile, one-lane road, and if somebody's coming the other way, I'm worried about getting out because there's no place to pull over. Um, so far, it's rained almost every day except for the day we got here. Uh, other than that, it's perfect. Our next big stop was Jackson, New Jersey, where we were going to turn around and head back home to Florida along the East Coast. But from Saxton, Pennsylvania to Jackson, New Jersey is 300 miles. And our new rule was not driving more than 200 miles a day, preferably 150 miles. We figured out for ourselves that that was the most comfortable pace for us. So we started breaking long distances with overnight stops where we did not need to unhook the car dolly. This 
time we picked a harvest hose top. Hangman Brewing Company, Claymont, Delaware. The brewery was easy to find, uh, but our 60 feet motorcade was too long to maneuver the brewery's parking lot while the strip mall was open. Couldn't make the turn again, so it has, has to unhook. Other than that, it was a great spot. Brad, the owner, is a great host. He's an interesting man, former chemist. No wonder the selection of beers and ciders was so impressive. He's also a musician, a drummer, and a dog lover. His rescued black lab brew welcomed every guest. Wine. I'm yes. drinking wine. Look at this bottle. Oh, you, you guys make wine? Uh, no. This, but this is what oh, you This is so here. cute. <laughs> it is. It keeps it nice yeah. and cold. You should take it with your towels. Yeah. Hi, Mimi. Hi. <laughs> are you serving this? Are, are you a band member? Or you just have yeah, I play the drums. I think you do. Yeah, that's my logo. Next week, it's uh, Thursday and Friday. I was having it every weekend. What kind of music? Uh, I'm into alternative rock. That's on the classic rock channel now. Because, yeah. <laughs> you know, from the 90s. Yeah. I grew up it, in the 90s. Yeah, it's no longer alternative, it's now mainstream. It, we also found a great Mexican restaurant in the town, El Tepatio. As an artist, I was very impressed with the decorations of this restaurant. Wait till you see the waitress! The food was delicious too. The next morning, we headed to Jackson, New Jersey, where we were going to separate with Jeff. Don't worry, just for a couple of days. He was going to meet with his friends and golf buddies and I and the dogs were going to New York City to visit my daughter. Hey Dougie, they're her calling. Uh, and you have the greatest uh, RV service visit in the country. We were not going to spend any time in the campground, Tip Tam. Good for us. The campground was a big disappointment. Crowded and dusty, surrounded by trees, but no grass, just dust and dirt. Are you seasonal? Like uh, you live here full? You live in Jersey full time still? Yeah, I've lived in Jersey my whole life. We just sold our house and we bought it. Uh, wow! Now so you're full time? Yeah. Now yeah. we're about to travel. Even if we got a homeschool kids. A little bit nicer in this area, but still gravel, dust, dirt. 
Jeff took me and the dogs to the Seastrick Ferry, the best way to go from Jersey Shore to New York City. I have a video about that. And then he drove to Manusquan to see his buddies. Hi, Anastasia. Wish you were here. Beautiful day. Beautiful day. Good call. And I, Mars, and Nala spent three wonderful days with Ginny. We are back on the road, on the way to our first campground on the East Coast, with a quick stop at Alpaca Farm in Maryland. It's going to be interesting. See you there. Oh, and I forgot to mention, the engine light warning sign went off eventually after about 800 miles, but it came back on again after leaving the Heritage Cove and it's been there since. But at the Freightliner Service Center, we were told not to overreact to it because it simply means that the regen process failed uh, due to road conditions, and when it succeeds, the light will go off. This is what we are hoping for. <laughs> 